in the language of the Holy Ghost. Reba sakara babo ya, robo sakara baba baba ya mama baba babo ya mama, reba babo ya mama.
said that, what's over the banner? I shall be born in heaven. I want to see you pray. Everybody start to pray, pray, pray. Just pray in the spirit now. Pray in the spirit. It's time to pray, pray. Whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We bind the powers of witchcraft, the marine kingdom, every curse, every conspiracy of the enemy against us. Bow down. to be here from Barbara. I can't hear what she's saying. Number four. Thank you. Go ahead. Barbara would like to be here from fibromyalgia. One more time. Barbara would like to be here from fibroids. Barbara what was? Barbara would like to be healed from fibroids. We rebuke fibroids right now in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Barbara, be free from fibroids. Be free from fibroids. We set Barbara free from fibroids in the name of Jesus. Talk to me. Scott need healing for back pain. Had surgery for his spine to be straight. What's his name? Scott. What's his name? Scott. 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 What, what's Scott suffering from back pain? His spine is cricket. He had a surgery to make it straight, and he's been in pain. He's asking God to heal him. Father, we said start free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Start be set free by the blood of Jesus. We set you free right now in Jesus' name. Next. Next. Your back is healed in Next. Next. Veronica would like to be healed from thyroid. Veronica be healed from thyroid right now. By the blood of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. Elizabeth, a prayer for Elizabeth to be healed from seizures. 
I rebuke seizures. Go in the name of Jesus. Come on, talk to me. Hey. Juliet to be healed from pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer. Bow down. Bow down in Jesus' name. Pray with me. Pray with me. Let them all pray. We rebuke the cancer now. Cancer, bow down. Pancreatic cancer, bow down. Pancreatic cancer, bow down. Healing for Janiel left eye that's been bothered. Who? Janiel. Daniello? Yes. From what? Eye pain. Left I, I, eye. Eye pain to depart from now in Jesus' name. Next. Bobby need healing from his right wrist. Bob. That's Bobby. Bobby. Healing from what? Left wrist inflammation. We rebuke inflammation on your wrist now in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I believe and I receive it. Say, I believe and I receive it. Say, I believe and I receive it. I believe and I receive it. I believe and I receive it. Next. Maggie, you want to be set free from migraines. Who? Maggie. From what? Migraines. Just say the name is a bit slower. Thank you. We rebuke migraine right now in Jesus' name. Go by the stripes of Jesus. Next. Is Isabel, who's in ICU from COVID-19, need healing? Isabel, be set free from COVID-19 by the stripes of Jesus. You see people reaching us from all over the nations right now. They're being healed by the power of God. The Lord is setting them free from all COVID-19. If you're suffering from the virus, God sets you free. God is setting you free. Now let's review COVID-19. Let's review the virus. Review the virus.
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can't hear you. Say the blood. The blood. Now clap is and pray, 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 pray. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Mante makara bobosa. Apply the blood of Jesus. His mother will praise. His mother will praise. Lift your hands up to Jesus. Come on. Lift your hands up. Let me pull. Let me pull. Let me pull. Come on. Pack your bag. Pack your bag. Pack your bag. Pack your bag. Call him seven times. 
time to prepare and set the atmosphere for the manifestation of God's glory. And we thank God because we kicked off on a high note of glory. Now this is a celebration of the mighty move of the Holy Ghost that has been released in regions. And we are aware that God is released his spirit in a greater measure. I want to thank God for all of you that showed up tonight from all over the Miami and other places, different territories. You traveled all the way to come over here. You came over here to bless the Lord. That's good. And you came over here to magnify the Lord. And I want to thank you all for coming. Clap to Jesus for that. I came in the apostolic authority and mantle because that is how we activate the glory. The anointing has been released in that great measure of the apostolic. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. The battle is the Lord's and victory is ours. We are here to redig the wells. And because we are redigging the wells, the atmosphere has been set for God to glorify Himself. Now, in a time like this, when there is a pandemic and multitudes of people are threatened by its existence. Can you make sure he's not in the subs, just in the Yamahas? Thank you. The subs is number five, so his mic should not go to number five. Thank you. As we are aware that 
a lot of people are trembling because of the pandemic. Tan is low down a bit too. So we are aware that the fear of the pandemic is caused a lot of people to stress. And because they're stressing, they don't go to church, but they go to work. So why is it people can go to work, but they don't go to church? Because the enemy knows that the church is the threat to his kingdom, to his establishment. For the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Our position is evidence that what you're doing is right. Our ministry was birthed with opposition. When I launched out here in 2006, I faced stiff opposition, death threats. I received a death threat when I came to book the facility. Uh, we were going to hold our meetings. But God was with me. It, the plans did not succeed. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. We're here tonight because the glory of God has sustained us. I used to ask myself, why am I facing opposition when what I'm doing is good? When what I'm doing is good. And God revealed to me that the enemy only opposes what God has blessed. The enemy doesn't fight what belongs to him. And the Lord encouraged me to say, as long as you lift me up, I will glorify myself. So that's why I never quit. They gave me one month. They gave me six months. They told me after six months, you will not be here. They set debt. And they said, he's going to quit. We faced persecution. The persecution came from all over. They gathered networks and radio stations to come against us. They sent witches to come to curse the meeting. They sent the agents to join our team. They signed up to be volunteers. The agents signed up to be, you know, ashes. They signed up to be in the choir. They signed up to help in the office. They signed up because they, they wanted to stop us from out, but they couldn't. So they said, okay, we're going to join his team and stop him from inside. Even though the devil tried that on Jesus, but Jesus knew who Judas was. Applaud his Seigneur. Utande? Oui, Utande? Messi. So Jesus Christ was aware that there was a Judas on his camp. There was a Judas on his team. Why was the enemy fighting Jesus? Because revival without repentancy is not revival. Some of the kids that were coming to our revival were kicked out of their homes. They were th thrown out. They were told, if you go to the church, don't come back to his house. One of them is right there. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. A, yes, come here. Her and her brother were kicked out of their house. They became homeless because of church. Clap to Jesus for that. Come up here. Come, 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 come up. Come up, come up. Her and her brother. Brother is not here. Come here. They were thrown out and they were made homeless. So I adopted them. I took them in as my kids. Spiritually. Someone say amen. And then uh, one of our church members took them to the house and accommodated them. And then they were able to graduate. And they're blessed. 
Each one of them has children. Some say, man, married with kids. Clap to Jesus for that. God bless you. That is what we call the price of revival. The, the altars could not take the fire. We faced opposition from every corner. It rallied from hell. And I want to say something that's so powerful. That I wore a bullet vest. I was wearing a bullet vest. In the beginning days of the revival. Because the, there was a team that was sent to assassinate. But at one time God told me you don't have to wear it anymore. I took care of them. God told me I didn't have to wear it anymore. So I, took, I threw it away. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. Thousands upon thousands came. Thousands. You want to sit over there so you can hear me? Sit right there. Thousands upon thousands came. Is my mic? I need some sound men on the mixer. Can you guys hear my microphone? So find somebody to increase me in number one, number two. My mic is 17. Increase it in one and two. Thank you. Amen. Not the gain. Not the gain. Just group one, two. Can you hear me now? He just turned it down. Can you hear me now? Is my mic clear? Utande? Thank you. Can you hear, brother? You good now? Now, we, we, the reason why I'm telling you about this is because you don't understand when God begins to move, all hell breaks loose. When God begins to move, the voodoo altars retaliated. They were trying to shut the river. They were trying to put the fire out on the altar. God releases a fire on the altar. So the, 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 the demons were trying to put it out. But they could not succeed. Because God began the fire. We witnessed battle after battle. Some of the conflicts we dealt with had to do with the network of churches trying to pray witchcraft prayers to try to shut us down. There was a woman that her pastor kicked her out of the church because she came to my healing service. Got, she, was, she was diagnosed with cancer of the breast and was eating a brain. It was eating a brain. And when she came, God healed her. And the pastor kicked out of our church because she got healed in my meeting because he didn't believe in healing. Someone say, man, and the cancer has never come back. It's now 14 years. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. Amen. When the glory is released, it will attract opposition and persecution. God sustained us by his spirit and by his, if you're watching us on social media, share this broadcast. Because I'm laying, I'm giving you a little background of the revival and how it came. So just go ahead and share this broadcast right now. Before I release the word that God has given me. Amen. So the devil was mad because the Lord gave me the territory. The Lord showed me when he sent me over here. He opened up the heavens and he showed me that he has given me this region. Can I amen to that? I, I, I thought you were going to clap to Jesus better than that. And he told me nothing would be able to stop me. I just have to lift him up. And then he showed me how the enemy was going to fight. He showed me the strategy the enemy was going to use. And he told me to hold my ground and let him take care of the work. Amen. Amen. So as we continue to plow the land... We set the course. We set the course. I had to cancel all my scheduled meetings. And we pounded the region. We went on for 100 days. And every night people were coming. Then the hurricane tried to come and stop us. God told me to rebuke it. So I took authority over the hurricane, shut it down. And no hurricane has touched down in this region since we began in 2006. 
That is the glory of God. We destroyed voodoo altars. Come here, Saji. Amen. Come here. Quickly. This, this, this guy was around 16 years old. When, go around, come up here. I don't want to break your back because you got twins coming. You have to change their diapers. Amen. So this young man, the first altar I destroyed. Now he's a grown man, but he was, a, he was bigger than this and was way bigger than this. Oh, he's bigger now. <laughs> Fitter. He's a, <laughs> he's a trainer. So I remember when I destroyed the altar of voodoo, one of the sticks was too hard to break. So I called a big guy to come and break it for me. How did it feel when you were breaking it? It felt good. I felt like I had authority over it that God gave us. <laughs> so what went through your What did people tell you when they, you walked off the stage when they, after I destroyed the altar? Did, in, in, in your language, what were they telling you? What does that mean? They said I wouldn't, come, I wouldn't be back here anymore. But you're still alive. The reason why, because people reverence the witchcraft, the voodoo. And when we destroy the altar, nothing happened. They thought something was going to happen to me. And then they thought something was going to happen to him. Nothing happened because when the glory comes, it neutralizes the witchcraft power. God bless you. Now he's married with twins coming very soon. Clap to Jesus for that. We first persecution. We first apostle, but we did not quit. We stood the ground. This work is birthed by the Holy Spirit. I didn't come here because I didn't have something to do. I came here because God has a plan for this city, this territory, and this region. Amen. So the Lord sent me with a mandate and a mission. And he told me, stand firm. Take a stand. Amen. And I saw... I said, Lord, stop the hurricane. He stopped it. God showed me when the enemy had planned to destroy this area. I saw water came from the ocean, swallowed people from air, took them to the ocean, killed them, and brought back dead bodies. And the Lord told me, I want you to warn the people here. So we began to pray and preach the gospel and went for nights. One of the young ladies, I hope she comes to the revival, she died in the van and I raised her back to life. The glory of God upon my life commanded to call her back to life. She came back to life from the dead. Clap to Jesus for that. I gave God glory for the testimony. Amen. Many people became touched, saved, healed, delivered. And the fire was released. I wanted to leave many times and go to other territories because you know the warfare was intense. The persecution was intense. One time I got on a flight with a secret plan. I was flying to New York City to go meet my, my grandmother, my family. And I said, I'm not going back to Florida because of the persecution. And then while I was on a flight, the Lord touched me by the spirit. I began to cry like a baby. He told me, let me handle the persecution. You preach my gospel. When I arrived in New York, I flew back and continued and continued and will never stop preaching the gospel. Opposition and persecution is a sign of breakthrough. Betrayal is a sign of promotion. I want to give God glory because we're standing and we're not backing down. We're going to buy buildings. We're going to buy territory. We're going to buy property. Somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Why? Because God has blessed us. The Lord spoke to me clearly. Amen. Florida is going to be the state that is going to decide the next president. I don't mean that Florida is a, makes a decision. God makes the decision. But he, he, he has specifically pointed out Florida as a battleground state but not only that because of the strategic
strategic positioning of this state. Now watch closely. Whoever wins Florida will win the presidency. Now I was given a glimpse of the uh, speech by the person that won as they congratulated the campaign and crew who supported them. And the speech was not a conceding speech. They did not concede defeat. No, they were declaring that they, they were being thankful for the support they got and they won. Amen. And I want to let you know that Florida is a, a very important state. We have to stand and pray and declare the righteousness of God. Now, when God sends apostles and prophets to a region, their God's authority structure, their God's fort, fortified GPSing position. In the spirit, I don't want to use the word principality, but I want to use the word kingdom. Uh, point of contact to run his kingdom and strength. You have to have intercessors. Tonight, I'm going to release a fire of intercession to come upon you. If we don't pray, we limit how much impact we can. Trans transition in a region and territory. God has shown me a biggest coven in Florida. The coven is a, is, a, is a group of witches that gather to fight the plans of God. And God told me, he showed me what they were discussing. And they were threatened by this church and they're threatened by what we do. And they wanted to stop us. They gave a debt when we were supposed to stop. The debt expired. It already passed. They gave us seven years and we're, we already passed seven years. Uplady! Can you hear me? Come on! God said no! God said no. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. A few weeks ago, God woke me up and told me, son, I'm getting ready to do something powerful. He told me, look and see. I saw past the curtain. I saw his angels. I saw his army. I saw his government. I saw what he's preparing to do. Then he drew me closer and guided me to what he was preparing. Then he showed me what was happening in the natural. What was happening in the natural was totally the opposite of what God is getting ready to do. So he told me, son, don't be distracted by what you see in the natural. I want you to focus on what I'm getting ready to do. We faced a lot of betrayal, a lot of exodus. A lot of people left our church. A lot of people abandoned the ministry. Because they were, they were defiled. They did not belong here. God had to remove them so he can make room for what he's about to do. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. Do I love them? Yes, I love them. But you cannot hold on to people that have refused to catch the vision. Because once you hold on to them, then they will hinder you. That's the problem that Moses dealt with. Jesus had the 5,000, he had the 12, he had the 12, and he had the 3. And God had to remove some people away from Christ to prepare what he was about to do. And the Lord showed me clearly, he said, son, they love religion. They don't want the revival. They don't want the fire. And he told me that you cannot hold on to them. Moses was a very meek minister, person. Moses was very meek, humble. He was the meekest person on earth. Meekest. 
That's what the Bible said. The most humble person on earth. The people caused Moses to rebel against God. Because they got him upset. And Moses struck the rock twice. And God warned me. He said some people have been assigned by the devil. To come and hinder what I want to do. Don't hold on to them. Because they're going to make you rebel. Because they're going to try to turn you away from what I've called you to do. And he said, once they leave, let them go. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. You missed the... Come on, clap in for Jesus. And God spoke to me clearly. He said, I have to focus on him. And he said, he's going to take care of my finances. He'll take care of the ministry. Because this is his church. This is his ministry. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. He said, he's going to take care of it. He said, there's some things he's not going to release. Because of the negative, the defilement. The, 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 the then he showed me a lot of people. How they were living in sin. They were living in demonic bondage. And they were fighting what he was doing in the spirit. And I said, okay. I, 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 and I said, I allow you to have your way. I give you leeway. I hand you over the work. Now take it to the next level. He said, I'm going to increase my glory on the house. He showed me when the glory was being released. Then he increased the glory. Then one time he summoned me. He said, come up here, son. We went up. He showed me the people. And he showed me, see, they're fighting among themselves. And I saw different people in the church. They're fighting each other. And he told me, son, don't get involved. He said, stay up here. Watch what I'm about to do. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. Why am I speaking like this? Because we're redigging the well. You came here tonight because God is going to impact the fire of intercession. God is going to impact the fire of intercession. That, because when the revival comes, you have to have intercessors. That will sustain the revival. Because we experience miracles. We experience power. There has to be impartation. Because I have to have people that support. Not leech. A leech sucks life out of you. But when you have the right people. They support you. You don't build the kingdom of God. Whereby the weight is on a man of God. You build the kingdom of God. It's like a pyramid. What I mean by that. It's not a pyramid. But the structure is supposed to be. The people help you lift the burden. They, they become a support cast. Not a drainer. So when they come receive a miracle. They receive deliverance. They translate that. One will chase a thousand, two chase ten thousand. What we're going to see right now is when the fire comes and the miracle comes upon somebody, when they go back to their home, to their village, to their county, they're going to translate that, what they received, to spread. They're not going to fight what God has used to bless them. They're going to be part of it. They're going to stay connected. And we're going to see the impact of this fire spreading across the nations. Somebody say amen. Uh, we're going to see people get miracles. This is what I see in Africa. This is what I saw in different territories. I prayed for women that had HIV. God healed her. When she got healed, she began to go testify that I had HIV. Apostle Sally prayed for me. God healed me. 
and she began to pray for the sick and God began to heal them. Now she's the powerful evangelist. You missed the play. That is what the anointing does. But through these years, what we heard is when people come and receive the miracles, when they go, they never come back to testify. When they go, they begin to fight and talk bad about the glory that's on the house. If they came from here, they will not talk bad about what God did here. Because they understand that it's God who released the blessing. But how do you know that they were not supposed to be here? How do you know that the enemy had sent them? How do you know that God removed them? When they begin to talk bad about what God did. Somebody say amen. That's how you know that God removed them. Because they were planted by the enemy. And their time expired. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. I came as an apostle tonight. I didn't come as a pastor. I came in my apostolic authority. Let me explain. Jesus Christ, when he was here on earth, he did not come to make friends. He came to make disciples. God did not send me to make friends. I'm not your friend. I'm not your body. I'm a man of God with a mandate, with a mission to release you from prison, to release you from bondage, to release you from captivity, to release you from witchcraft, to release you from spells. Somebody say hallelujah. I have to hear from God and release what God has told me. The fire you're going to receive tonight is going to change your language. You will no longer say it is impossible. You're going to say all things are possible. America is being shaken. Nations are being shaken. Africa. India. There's a thread of a war between China and India. This election year, I'll talk about this maybe tomorrow. Things that could happen if we don't pray. Maybe you think in your mind that probably there's a lot of time left. God wants the church to prepare for the Lord's return. Jesus is coming back very soon. There is no time to waste. Prepare your house. Set your house in order. For tomorrow, God is about to do great and mighty things amongst you. Amen. Holiness is a must. Without holiness, you're going to be left behind. Without holiness, no one shall see God. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. God is looking for a holy people. A people that are set apart for his purposes, for his kingdom, for his glory. Can I admit that? Can I admit that? No sin in the church. No sin in the camp. Holiness. Without holiness, no one shall see God. We have to be holy. We are people that God has set apart for himself. God is going to give you the wealth of the wicked. God is going to give you influence. It is not for your glory. It's for his glory. We are to learn to walk in authority. But how can you walk in authority if you don't know how to honor 
the anointing. How can you walk in authority if you, don't, if you do not know how to reverence God? How can you walk in authority if you don't understand how to love? The Bible said, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, will heal the land. If we turn from our wicked ways, that means we turn from the worldly ways. The ways the world does things is wicked. If you're a follower of Christ, you don't have the mindset of the world. You have the mindset of Christ. Seeking God is not a Sunday morning thing. Seeking God is a daily thing. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, the Bible says in verse 11, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and his judgments of his mouth. Oh, ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, he has chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. This is the time to seek God. America, seek God. God, renounce homosexuality. Renounce racism. Renounce racism. Read First Chronicles, excuse me, chapter 11. No, no, chapter, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. No, First Chronicles, excuse me. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. As my brother reads the scripture, I want you to hear this. No one is exempt from the wrath of God if you don't have the blood of Jesus. Read. Read verse 10. Glory ye in his name. Read, read, read verse 10. Let me, I'll give you time to finish it. Read verse 10. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Why is there falling away? Why is there mass exodus from the church? Because people are sick and tired of seeking God. They don't want to seek God. They want to run the show. They want to run the mafia cartel. They want to run the mafia cartel. Mafia. God spoke to me clearly. He said religion. Mafia mentality. Nothing to do with God. If you seek God, you will not backslide. You will not fall from grace. America stopped seeking God a long time ago. When prosperity came. It's time to seek God. Are you aware can you see what's happening in this nation? Yesterday, as soon as the president finished his convention, 
senators were attacked by protesters. Imagine what kind of anarchy will happen in this nation if we don't pray. You thought the, pro the protests in Haiti was something when they were trying to get rid of the president? What about the protests you saw in Belarus? That's nothing compared to what will happen in this country if the Lord doesn't intervene. I want you to hear me clearly. The church stopped seeking God a long time ago. They have buildings, but they don't gather. Just came back from South Carolina and Georgia. Most of the buildings are closed. Pastor spoke to me and said, a lot of, a lot of pastors in the hospital. People are scared to death. And so we have to declare that we are in Goshen. We are declared that we are in the glory. There is no fear of the pandemic. The Bible said the righteous is bold as a lion, but the wicked flee when no one pursueth them. Before I finish, because this is the first night we're opening. It's our opening night. The price you pay to abide in God's presence, to maintain the glory, is to seek the Lord. Remember his marvelous works. He has done his wonders and judgments of his mouth. Verse 12. Read verse 12. Remember his marvelous works. God has done mighty works. How many miracles has God done in front of us? Thousands. Miracles don't change people. No. Most of the people that receive their miracles, they even backslid. They're not in Christ anymore. Isn't that shocking? When somebody healed from HIV and a backslide, somebody receive a miracle and they walk away from the Lord. Because miracles don't change people. They get attention. They get the attention of people. It is shock. But what changes the people is the Holy Spirit. Yes. We. Only the Holy Spirit can change people. And why do people backslide? Because they stop seeking God. Once they get their healing and their deliverance, they say, why do I have to go to church? I don't have to go to l'église. And God says, seek the Lord. And his strength, seek his face continually. We don't just seek him because we have a problem. We seek him continually. We're here for three nights seeking God. Not just because you want to get a goosebump. We want change. We want transformation. We want deliverance. I'm not talking about an emotional goosebump feeling. I'm talking about deliverance. Where you renounce voodoo, witchcraft, sorcery, immorality. I used to ask myself a question, why? We take youth to camp. They get fired up after a couple of days. Because we are there for six days, seven days. So they get empowered, taught, they catch the fire. And then when we leave camp and we come back, after a few weeks, they lose the fire. We've done this for more than 10 years. 
And then the Lord revealed this to me. That once they test the glory and experience fire, they stop seeking God. They lose the fire. Because an experience will not protect you. God will protect you. When God gives you an experience, it is for you to be activated to seek him. That's why when you go to work and you get given a paycheck, you don't take the paycheck and say, I ain't going to work again until I finish this paycheck. You got to continue to work. Clock in and you get another paycheck. You clock in. You have to work it. You have to seek God. Sashay Jezi. Not only once. Every time. So most young people, for them, one week is too much. After that, they're going to go after other stuff. We have to plug in. Seek God continually. It's not a one day goosebump experience. It is something that we are to do continuously. Hear me, America. After the elections, we are to continue to seek God. Hear me, nations. Hear me. Do not use God. Love him. Be part of what he's doing. Do not use him. Verse 13 as a finish. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. Be mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. God is not just dealing with you. He's dealing with your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. If Christ tarries, what if he doesn't come tomorrow? What you're doing now is impacting your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren. Why do people miss God? Familiarity. They familiarize. They only do it for appeasing impressions. Learn to reverence God. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Reverence him. You have to reverence God. You have to reverence him. If you don't reverence him, you cannot maintain him. God is a lover, but he is also a God that loves to be respected, reverenced, and honored. This morning, as I finish, I want to lift up your hands and say, Father, say, Father, help me. Learn to seek you, to maintain your fire, to maintain your glory. Clap hands for Jesus. Let me tell you something here as I finish. You cannot maintain the fire of God if you don't learn to fear him if you don't learn to carry the cross 
because the cross, the cross is an offense to the world. And we have to learn that that's the price we have to pay. To be distinctly different from the world. The world is going to hate us. But God loves us. Though we're in this world, we are not of this world. We are of our Father in heaven. You're going to face persecution from family members, from friends. Don't abandon the faith. When they ridicule you because you're praying in tongues, when they make fun of you, you keep doing what you're called to do. Because that's where the power is. The only reason why they're fighting is because they cannot stop you. The reason why they're manifesting is because you're blessed. Hold on to that which God has given you. The anointing brings persecution. It also brings breakthrough. Amen? We have to be firm in our faith. Because the rapture could happen anytime. Don't hold any grudge or offense towards people. And always remember to pray that the Lord will prepare you for the rapture. If you're watching me now, you're sick in your body, God's going to heal you. But after he has healed you, you don't stop seeking him. You continue to seek him because he is not just your healer, he's your savior. What you need is the Lord. Bow your head. I'm going to make an altar call for salvation. If you're watching me or you're in this room and you don't know Jesus in your heart, I want to give you opportunity to receive Jesus. If you want to receive Jesus, simply say this after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I repent and I renounce my sin. Remove my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I accept you in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I am born again in Jesus' name. Let us give all the best clap of it. Now listen to this. Tonight, I had to release an apostolic message to set the precedent, the plateau upon which we're going to marinate. And I'm going to release prophetic words because we are redigging the wells of revival and the fire is going to be so strong. Everyone that is sick, oppressed, bewitched, cursed, Whatever they released on you, it shall not stand. It shall not stay. It will not operate. It will not hinder you. Because God has started a good work. He shall be faithful to accomplish it. Let us give him the best clap of friend. Lift your hands up to Jesus. La vena glow viva.